meeting. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, this meeting I especially arranged for uh, the IMG doctors, especially the ones who are applying for the ST training in psychiatry, because I'm getting a lot of questions from um, different IMGs asking me that, you know, what is the process? Uh, people who have done their MRC psych and they are a little bit confused on how to go about applying for ST training. Because the process for IMGs who haven't done code training is a bit different from, um, from, uh, from the normal code training there. So generally speaking, the code training in psychiatry, as you know, is divided into two parts. Um, sorry, the, the psychiatry training is divided into two parts. The code training is done in three years. And during that time, the doctor pass uh, their MRC psych and then they apply for the SU training. But if you have done training elsewhere, like in India, Pakistan, and other countries, um, then you, and, and if you pass your um, MRC psych or if you've done part of your training in, in UK, uh, then you can also pass your MRC psych and then apply for the ST training. For that, you have to get something called Certificate C, which is a core competency equivalent. But I thought, you know, because I was getting so many questions around this, uh, I thought it would be better, a good idea for me to invite uh, some of the successful candidates who IMGs who have actually done this successfully. Um, so I will I'll let them introduce one by one, but uh, I'd like to thank them all, especially Sir Diwali and um, you know, they all have family commitment, but they're still giving us time. Um, so first I'll go with Vineet. Um, Vineet is, uh, let me just unmute him. Uh, Vineet is, uh, uh, is a very uh, nice chap and I met him through, the fa uh, through, through Facebook and social media and um, it's been um, quite helpful with, the, with this sort of process. Uh, Manish, would you like to introduce yourself and how did you come to UK and um, uh, and you know about a little bit about yourself and then we'll talk about the process. Yeah, sure, sure, Dr. Uh, so my name is Vineet Sukumar. Uh, I did my uh, post-graduation in psychiatry in India and I came to the UK in 2020, uh, Feb of 2020, through a program called as Clinical Fellowship Program, uh, which is run by the Black Country uh, NHS Trust. Uh, and uh, I came across the program through the through the NHS job website, and uh, I had applied for it. And then we had an interview process uh, through which I got selected. Uh, and luckily, I had come right before the uh, pandemic lockdown, uh, just before the pandemic lockdown. So I didn't uh, uh, encounter any issues over there. And uh, even before I came, I was uh, you know just because it was such a new thing for me, and I had no idea what was going to happen. I was just uh, going on Google and searching, and I came across uh, Dr. Ahmed's, uh, a lot of his websites and videos. So then I got in touch with him over Twitter, and it was actually Dr. Ahmed who told me, you should keep an eye on MRC Psych, you should you know, keep an eye for your future. And then I started working on it. And then I think uh, I, uh, because of the pandemic, um, they had removed the requirement of completing the written papers before giving the CAS. So I gave the CAS first, and then gave paper B and paper A. Uh, and I think it was earlier this year that I had uh, created paper A. And then uh, again, uh, I told Dr. Ahmed that I've cleared and he told you have to be careful about the certificate C. And uh, uh, so I came across uh, uh, the certificate C online and had it filled out by my consultant. And then I applied for the ST4 training uh, and uh, so luckily I've got a post as well uh, at Leeds. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's about me. So Vineet will start his SD training from February. I'll go to Amit again now. Amit uh, will explain his journey and um, he he's uh, one of the doctors who actually worked with me. I physically, I've known him uh, <laughs> personally, <laughs> not through just, just through social media. Yeah, hi. Uh, hello everyone. I, I don't see anyone. But yeah, uh, I'm Dr. Amit uh, Chogule. Uh, I came to the UK in 2019. This was through the uh, BAPIO scheme, which was like BAPIO Medical Training Initiative scheme. Uh, it took me a long time to come. I think few of you must have read my blog, which was again encouraged by Raja to write, uh, to write about my experience basically. So yeah, I started in uh, Cardiff, uh, near to Cardiff, there's a place called Lantrisent as a uh, international training fellow for two years, cleared my MRSEC during the process. And then uh, last August, I applied for higher training. And this August, I started with uh, started at Cambridge, basically, as a dual trainee in general adult psychiatry and oldest psychiatry. Yeah, again, uh, C certificate was, uh, it was quite a tough job, basically. It, it, I think everyone should start as early as possible. 
And then again, uh, the self-assessment part, which is very important during application is quite, uh, I'll say complex. So today I hope we will you know, address few of the queries you have. So yeah, once you have MRSS, I can see certificate, you are all ready for the ST4. Uh, Anubhav, uh, I'll come to you next. Uh... Yeah, hello friends. Uh, my name is Anubhav. So I did my core training for in from India and started working there. And suddenly I thought I should come to UK. So I came via Royal College MTI scheme. And in last two years, even with the pandemic, I was lucky enough to finish with the MRC psych. So I did one year of MTI and then one year in Wolverhampton at a middle grade job, non kind of registrar grade non-training job. And then I applied for ST4 and I started ST4 in mostly training program in general adult and old age dual training. And this was in August. So and credit goes to Amit because <laughs> almost every step of this whole ST4 application, I finished almost everything on the last date. And it was like Amit encouraged me that I should do it. <laughs> And yeah, so I am now happy that I did it and I'm quite glad to have started ST training now. So um, if we go back to, I mean, I just wanted to say if somebody wants to ask questions, they can either raise their hands or um, we can um, we can also, um, the, you can type in the chat and we can, uh, we can I can read, uh, read the question out to the participant. But they have all mentioned certificate C, which is basically a core competency equivalent. So if you haven't done your training, uh, core training in UK, you have to get this certificate C signed. And a new certificate C has been uploaded on the website. Uh, which I don't know if you've seen, but if you go to the ST training website, <clears throat> I'll show you how to go there and then you can find a certificate C there. Even if you if you haven't uh, passed your MRC cycle, this is something which, and you're training up, up outside uh, UK, um, it, is, it is good to actually have a look at this certificate because you know you can start doing those competencies as you go on rather than leaving it at, at the last minute. So I think that'll uh, explain that. And I'll, I'll then ask our part participants. So this is the ST training, uh, ST training psychiatry website, which is very accessible. And if you go to that uh, guidance documents there, then you can open the certificate C. You will find this certificate core competency equivalent form C. I mean, uh, 2022 onwards. So it might change next year as well. Um, I I have seen it. I mean, I I I don't think there had been any major changes. Um, this is a form, but I'll ask Vinit and Amit and Anubhav to to explain that. If they if they encountered any uh, problems filling that one of the problems which some of the trainees feel that uh, is about gathering the evidence and showing that evidence to their supervisor and this there is this uh, competency requirement of doing psychotherapy as well like our core trainees in UK do psychotherapy so they expect uh, this the candidate is applying to have done one short case and one long case so if you are already in training somewhere or working in psychiatry I think this is something that you should really think of to get out of the way. So, uh, Vinit, if you want to explain your experience with uh, Certificate C, if you find anything uh, difficult in it or confusing, that, and how did you went about it? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. So, uh, I remember for the psychotherapy, uh, I had shown my, because I had a logbook record when I was uh, doing my uh, training in India. And I had shown, uh, you know, photos of the logbook record, which was accepted as evidence. Uh, and the other thing was there was a uh, requirement of the uh, an audit uh, to be completed, the audit cycle to be completed. So that I had uh, and uh, my head of the department write a letter saying that he has completed the audit cycle. Uh, so those are the uh, two that I had to actually go back and uh, gain evidence. Uh, luckily, the my consultant psychiatrist had also done uh, she's also from, uh, had initially come from India. So she was aware of how uh, MD works in India. And so she was quite happy to uh, sign the form quite quickly. Uh, and uh, so the, the main two things which I had to do was to get the psychotherapy evidence and to get the evidence of the uh, audit form to be done. That's what I had thought. Uh, but other than that, because uh, I had a consult psychiatrist who was ready to uh, who was as experienced in India, she was quite happy to sign it uh, uh, based on my MD degree from India as well. So, so as you said that the, you don't, your psychiatrist, uh, your consultant here in UK or uh, whoever you're working with, they don't have to physically see see you doing all these things as long as you yeah. give them the evidence. 
they are they are really happy to sort of sign sign it uh, and then they will uh, this is a declaration part where your supervisor signs uh, anubhav what was your experience with with this form is there any any uh, issues so, there to be honest my experience particularly was straight forward because i actually filled that form i had been in uk already so i could get show the evidence from my time in uk as well as in india but i think the most difficult part that most people will feel is the psychotherapy competency and we'll talk about it in detail and uh, other thing like uh, audit and clinical governance because if you just go by the words they feel like very big words or difficult to understand but either this kind of things are already done by most of us but we just don't know we have done it or we don't call it audit or clinical governance or it can be done very easily it, it doesn't take long time to do those things so it's easily achievable but psychotherapy can be tricky and i hope we can talk about it in more detail later okay yeah. um I'll ask Amit, and then we'll talk about the psychotherapy experience. Amit, what was your experience yeah. with the sorry, certificate? Sorry, just a sorry. minute, Raj. Sorry yeah. to interrupt, Raja. Yeah. So, yeah. Should we? Uh, so, when I, one of us will be talking at the time. So, should we try to um, like reply to chat co- question and comments if possible, or should we? Yeah, yeah. no, you go... can reply to the chat comments. I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Amit, so, um, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, my my experience was that it it took me a long time to get all the. Uh, evidence but a good thing was that yeah as anbhav said we because we were already in the uk and we had portfolio there was a lot of things which we did in the portfolio which we could show but again we had to get a lot of competencies from india so i i had i worked in two medical colleges during my post graduation so i had, I had to mail my head of department uh, to get few competencies good thing was that in both of my medical colleges there was uh, we had like a uh, uh, basically a journal basically uh, where we where we recorded everything and i told them to actually uh, scan and email me and they really did that and so i could present that as evidence uh, so i think people who have not been in the uk and who are currently outside the uk uh, yeah as, as anubhav said we do a lot of things but we don't document them so uh, we will i mean here we can just show you what what is required so the new form i just checked the new form it is really good so what they have did is so they have made it more objective rather than subjective so they have uh, for the psychotherapy competencies they have given you know exact things which are required before it was just a blank uh, blank thing and it was difficult for the uh, for the consultant who is uh, writing about psychotherapy ex- uh, competencies what to write exactly so but now they have given you know things like date started date completed number of sessions and everything so that is actually good uh, and again they also uh, previously it was like only the one consultant used to sign it but then uh, that one consultant is not aware of all your competencies so you used to get evidence from different consultants so now you also have an opportunity to, to get the sign from a lot of other consultants so this is the psychotherapy portion amit is talking about that they uh, and this is exactly what they expect the court we need to do in uk that they have to do a short case and a long case so they are basically saying that uh, about your short case that you must have done 12 about uh, between 12 to 20 sessions and form of therapy you've done for example is the cbt when did you start when did you complete it what was the number of sex- uh, um, sessions you have done uh, dates the competency to sign out and then there is a uh, the long therapy the long case basically um they're saying that you need to again the similar thing uh, as amit was mentioning that they have made it more clear rather than just a tick box they made it more clear that what you need to do and this portion i just wanted to say which a lot of people have asked me about so obviously this form is generally signed by one 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 of your supervisors this is the super this is where the supervisor sign but then there is a portion after that where the supervisor can uh, tell the uh, uh panel you know who were the performance getting submitted to that um, wh- uh, what kind of evidence they have seen to sign this form uh, so if this is the portion if if you have as amit mentioned if you've done your training in multiple places multiple supervisors you know and you are you gathering evidence from them so they can sort of um, uh, sign it. is that right amit Man- yeah exactly so uh, for example if you are signing the form from so you have completed your md then you worked as a sr in a different place and now you are in a different place so your final consultant or supervisor will uh, sign this form so he will need the evidence from previous two uh, hospitals so they can also sign so there's a provision made for the 
previous two consultants to sign so that is good and um, regarding the, the psychotherapy anubhav you will since say that you have some uh, ideas of how can the imgs achieve that so, so basically this certificate c which is the certificate that would be used from the next cycle has two main differences that i could easily like see on the first glance first was regarding psychotherapy they have asked they have asked much more details previously it was like you can just give a certificate from your psychotherapy tutor or a consultant that you have done this and that things but now they are basically clearly asking for the date and what you did and those kind of things that's the major first difference. and second thing is they have also given option to add other evidence for example i got it um, someone was asking if it needs to be filled from by the person in your country so i got it filled and signed by person, a consultant in the uk whereas my but i supplied him from with the certificates from my co training in india and my mti post in uk so when he filled the form and signed it he had the experience of working with me for more than 3 months he had the experience of the other evidence that i had given it uh, given to him so that is the kind of things that you can write down in the form towards the end when the person signing in can write down what are the other evidence that he has looked at and regarding psychotherapy so in the uh, uk generally people in co training spend their first year doing belin group which is a psychotherapy group in which you share the patients and other things that you experience or patients that you have seen and then you try to analyze those things from the psychology point of view and then you do a short case and then you do a long case so all this in this the basic idea is when you do a psychotherapy you take a psychotherapy experience then you are better able to understand all the dynamics that goes on in the relationship between the doctor and the patient which helps you towards the providing better care quality of care to the patient so um, my strong suggestion is that there is a core psychiatry curriculum on royal college website easily downloadable in which there is a very detailed note about what kind of psychotherapy experience is expected then just to add when i when i filled that form i had just got a, got a certificate signed by my consultant that i had done a long course this was the title it was of this many sessions and a short course this was the title in this many sessions so it's easy i think it's easy to get but if you understand what is exactly needed then you can probably get it put in the proper words rather than probably put in your words with then it may not be acceptable if i'm making sense yeah i think the most important part for imgs is that you need to know more about this because your clinical supervisor there in, in india pakistan or wherever he won't have time to go through all this and then write uh, uh, this competency the right the way they want so you have, you are the person who should read about it and tell them that what is expected and then they can make a letter according to that which is usually what happens there so uh, yeah so as anubhav said you should read all the competencies properly you should see what is exactly expected and just have to your your supervisor there has to you know tailor make this, this the the note he is writing regarding a competency so uh, raja is it possible that i can share my screen yeah you should be able to uh, let me just open the sharing option i'll uh, are you showing your certificate see so i am just showing <laughs> a basic and um screen Uh, it says possible and you you can say it just screen yet yeah. okay yeah so i just try to show is the competency for so this is directly from the st uh, court psychiatric curriculum on royal college website uh, we won't go into detail of this but if you go through this you will be easily able to understand what is expected and what you should be able to provide as the experience you have so you, so in the end the certificate can be very short just saying what is the case you have done how many sessions from this date to this date and it can be written in the certificate c okay so i, I think we can share this it's also available on st4 website so we can share uh, how do i stop it okay All right. Uh, I will just uh, let me just see if Sakib Siddiqui has Siddiqui has joined. Right. Otherwise, we have to move to the next question. Um, I think he's been trying to join. One second. The 
other thing, Vinit, do you want to add anything else so, so far what we have said about the psychotherapy or um, the part which people, IMGs might struggle? Yeah, I think uh, I agree with what Amit said because even I had to send the letter back once or twice to my to head of the department when the college where I did because the wording was not proper. Uh, but this is more towards the self-assessment part of things. Uh, so I think well, like what Amit said, it's uh, because they have no idea of what we actually need. Um, it's uh, preferable if you can literally say and type it out and say this is what you need uh, to be written on the uh, letter. That's that's quite uh, important. And then, uh, like Anubhav said, having an idea of what you need uh, uh, and gathering that evidence because quite a lot of time, uh, because when I was doing my certificate, see, I first saw Anubhav's and I got really scared because he has a lot of evidence and he has collected everything very, uh, you know, uh, I would say meticulously. Uh, and then I, I also spoke to uh, one trainee who is from Kuwait uh, he did his uh, undergraduation in Malta and then he was working in Kuwait uh, where uh, his uh, uh, consultant were, has just, this was the old form. So he just written that he has done these sessions and he certifies that he's done it. And then uh, he had signed it off and they had accepted it. So as long as you can get someone, uh, <coughs> provide them with the right evidence and they are ready to sign it off for you, uh, your certificate C should be fine. Mm -hmm. There's one more ST4 called Dr. Saqib, uh, who's joined us. Saqib, uh, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, he's, uh, Saqib is generally from Pakistan, and he came from a different path than the, the gentleman you've been talking to. Uh, Saqib, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, sure. So my name is uh, Saqib Siddiq. Um, I'm currently working as an ST4 um, psychiatry trainee in CAMS in, in, in the Northeast Greenery. <laughs> Um, so I've done my, uh, my three years of training in Pakistan and then um, on a similar scheme like MTI in Ireland, I trained for two years in Ireland. Um, meanwhile, I passed MRC Psych and then on this um, post MRC Psych uh, training pathway, I got, uh, I, I got into ST training and now this is my first year of ST training in CAMS. So one thing I wanted to ask you, especially Sakib, and then we'll move to the other parts of the presentation, uh, that you got your registration via MRC Psych. So how was that process? So after you passed the MRC Psych, you know, do you need the English competencies? And then how did you go about, was it easy through GMC? And how did you get the, the, the GMC registration through that? So uh, in my case, what I did was that I gave ILETS academics um, and uh, based on MRC Psych and uh, ILETS, I got GMC registration. Uh, later on, I came to know that because I worked for two years in Ireland, I could have asked one of the consultants to sign the English, uh, uh, English competency for me and I could have gotten uh, GMC registration through without even giving ILETS. Um, but I think the GMC registration process was very easy. Uh, it took me only one week to get GMC registration. Um, I think it's always handy to, to make sure that all your uh, major documents like your, your MBBS uh, or your MBBS degree, your MRC site, they're already EPIC certified. So you need to make sure that you go through all the verifications once you have the documents. Um, because sometimes uh, it, it could lead to a lot of delays uh, if, if you have not ten, done them already. So in my case, because, because I, was, I was training in Ireland, so I've already done all that. I've had my, my MBBS degree uh, EPIC verified. I had my house job EPIC verified, and then I got my MRC psych EPIC verified as well. So uh, the whole uh, GMC registration, it only took me, took me one week. And I actually applied for GMC registration after I got my, my SD post. So it only took me one week to, to get it. It was, it was quite easy. Mm -hmm. And do you want to add anything? They were talking about Certificate C, of the experience of Certificate C. I mean, there's a new Certificate C now, um, just some few changes. But what was the experience of getting assigned? Was it difficult or did you find it um, challenging or was it easy? Um, I think it was it was quite easy for me. So I have worked with a consultant for six months uh, in Ireland, and I asked um, that specific consultant to to sign uh, the core competency form for me. So I just had to to share um, uh, some of the some of the evidences uh, which I said that I already have. So specifically, it was about uh, the psychotherapy evidence. So I had done a six months uh, postgraduate course in cognitive behavioral therapy. I've done a 
uh, DPT course online as well. So I, I shared all this um, evidence with, with the consultant who actually was my supervisor during the two years of training. Um, so as part of our two years training, we had to sign a couple of uh, workplace-based assessment as well. So I shared um, all my workplace assessment with, with the consultant as well. So it was quite easy. Mm. I mean, uh, I feel that most consultants, they are they're very helpful. Uh, in signing these forms, if they are generally satisfied with your performance, um, I don't think so. You'll have any uh, difficulty getting your C form signed. And this um, screen I'm just sharing, this is from the um, from the last round, basically. But I think they're going to do the same thing again uh, this round. So how do they really rank you? So there's maximum score of 200, which you can get, but they have divided the score into th uh, three different parts. So you they, you you get marks for uh, your CASC exam, um, and they have been adjusted as a complex system and how they calculate it. But you know that I would say that has been done. So you have done CASC, so forget about, about about that. Don't worry too much about it. So the things you need to work on is your uh, verified self-assessment score, which counts for the 17% and the two interview questions they will ask you. Um, an interview would be online. Um, so I think this verified self-assessment scores can be, um, uh, you don't have, don't need to have um, uh, um, a minimum score, but you know, this is something that, that confuses a lot of IMGs because a lot of the evidence they're bringing in is from outside UK and they always get confused about that. And uh, I, this is a specific thing I wanted to ask um, all the, our ST4s uh, that what was their experience of uh, the verified self-assessment score? Um, let me just go with Vineet again first. Vineet, what was your experience and uh, did you uh, find any hurdles that you will say that IMGs will, might find doing that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, in terms of the self-assessment, so the difficulty can be getting the evidence once again because uh, I had worked in three different hospitals and I couldn't get any evidence from one of the hospitals uh, and I had to rely on the evidence in the other hospitals. But... Um, uh, so, uh, like I said, I have done my MD psychiatry from uh, India. So, uh, for me, uh, there is a, a, a particular area where they score you five points for original research done. So, for me, they did score, uh, I did get uh, five points in my self assessment score, but I know of some other applicants who didn't get any score because there's also a clause that if it's done as part of uh, uh, an MD program, it may not be uh, accepted. So it's quite subjective, I guess, based on whoever is going to assess uh, your particular uh, self-assessment score. Uh, and uh, so then again, because I had already gathered the evidence for my certificate C about the audit cycle, I used the same uh, over here. And uh, the other thing is uh, I had all these slides of the presentations I had done. So I had uh, done my uh, thesis presentation in uh, South Indian psychiatry uh, uh, conference. So luckily I had the abstract and all uh, saved on my email. So I could just easily upload those uh, evidence onto the, uh, and the other thing is you can upload as many evidence as you want. Uh, so uh, I think it would be better if you uh, collect all the evidence that you can and uh, uh, upload all of the evidence rather than just uh, believing that one evidence will give you the mark. Uh, so I had the abstract about what I had presented. I had the certificate from what I had presented. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that was uh, the main thing. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. Uh, over here, I did score myself zero uh, because I didn't have any of these things. But mm -hmm. later on, there is a, a particular for points for original research done, which I yeah. did give my thesis. And for me, it was accepted, but I know other applicants whose it was not accepted. Uh, uh, so uh, again, I think it's about evidence and it's about having uh, those, uh, uploading all the evidence that you can and starting off early rather than keeping it for later so that you give enough time for getting all the evidence as well. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's my experience with this thing. This I'll say this document is on the website and this is from the last round. So they might tweak it and then might make it make it a bit different. But uh, this is what they were scoring people, asking the people to, to score themselves on. And they, they were also saying that you need to be careful. Don't don't sort of over score or don't cause cause don't claim any false marks because that can actually become an issue with GMC and all that. They want they want that as well. 
but uh, i'll go to An- anubhav next um, anubhav you have uh, we've been hearing that you have you were very well organized and you, you did you did score in every point <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> i we need to start our certificacy not the self assessment so for self assessment i would say two things one is that you can so they will say that you need to upload only one evidence for anything that you are claiming you don't need to upload many evidence but you can do that because sometimes i wasn't sure if they will accept one thing or not but i would just um express one kind of caution that if you are claiming four marks and if you upload two things one is equal to four marks and one is equal to three marks then you might be getting marks three marks for the other thing so you have to be sure that if you upload more than one thing they are of equal marks because it's quite possible that someone looks at two evidence then like one evidence and gives you less evidence so it's about how much you are claiming right so do you think we can quickly go to all the domains one by one so that if anyone everyone can have a yeah yeah i think we i was going to do that we'll go to yeah. the domains one by one um Uh, so the first domain is they were obviously on the undergraduate training and additional degrees this is like basically uh, specifically for undergraduate when you are a medical student around that time if you have done an additional degree i mean this when i was a medical student we know we, ne- we didn't even think about that we only used to do mbbs that was a big thing but nowadays even in pakistan people are just giving this one english paper or something and ge- getting a ba or something in english so that is for that and some of the british graduates i know they take a year out to do uh, an additional degree sometimes and that uh, that these marks are for that so i don't if you haven't done that don't worry about it you know that's not a big deal um so we back to the next one this is a, a important one the undergraduate prizes uh, and awards did any of you guys got got any marks on this one because if you have um, have done well in your medical school you can get marks on that and what kind of evidence to look for No, I don't. Do, I don't think people who have got uh, marks in this are in psychiatry. I didn't understand that. Uh, I did get because in our uh, university, in our college, what we had is we had uh, a few psychiatrists, but the the among the psychiatry PGs, the one who scores the top mark will get an uh, a particular certificate. So I used that certificate, and I did get uh, two marks out of that. So. <laughs> um i was surprised that i got any marks so that is that is quite good and and i know other doctors as well uh who's done there from india and there was uh so uh, in india sometimes uh, among the pg courses itself they'll give you a particular certificate if you are the top scorer so even another doctor i know was the top scorer and he also had the certificate and he got the mark as well so uh, i think it's about the evidence as you mentioned a lot of the yeah. time you when you have got a distinction but it's not written on your transcript and and you don't have a certificate and you may be a top 10 of your class in the class of 200 300 but if if you don't have that written somewhere you know that might uh, people might struggle with that so this is yeah. something if if you haven't got in writing they might not um, well, might not give it to you so they have very clearly clearly said that you need some sort some kind of uh, evidence saying that you have done that <laughs> so, yeah um then this is the domain 3 which is the post graduate medical qualification i think this is very important before that I, i went to that one of the question people are constantly asking me is that when you are submitting the form do you need to submit all the evidence at that point in time this this i no. mean this uh, no 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 you don't that comes on later on uh, they're going to email you about it uh, to start uploading your evidence so at the time of application you you have to score yourself so you have to score yourself in all these domains but um, uploading the evidence that's a that's a later process is that right i mean care- yeah yeah but it's just that you need to be careful like just don't start you know i, I will see you need to have the evidence because there is a clause where they say that if you uh ma- like mark yourself five five points more than what is expected then there there can be issue there can be uh, yeah so so make sure that you can actually get some evidence for what you are claiming mm-hmm. so i yeah. yeah i will just add one thing so when you actually um rate your give yourself marks that won't be the time you upload the evidence so it's possible that when you upload the evidence so for example i gave myself some marks and then i i be, between the time of this marking myself and uploading the evidence i could gather that evidence so that was fine but if for example i would not i had not been able to gather that evidence in time then it would have just meant that i would not upload any evidence and it automatically it would be zero so i don't think that should be a worry 
is just the thing that you don't mark yourself excessively. So try to be honest. But if you have any doubt, whether it's three or four, then definitely go for four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this. Uh, this uh, sorry, Abhinit. Need... Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, to what Anubhav said that uh, you know you need to take the scoring very seriously because uh, because like I was saying earlier, the doctors who had same evidence that I had but got lesser marks than me, they scored themselves lesser marks as well when they did this. So probably that's why because even though they got the evidence later on, when they put it up, that was not accepted at that time and they were put back to the mark which they had scored themselves, but they were expecting more than what they had scored. So I think getting more than what you actually award yourself might be a bit hard. So you need to look at it very seriously and uh, understand what evidence you can get and then uh, score yourselves accordingly. Yeah. How much time do you have from when you submit a form to the evidence? Is it a month or two months you get in between? I think it's yeah, around weeks. six weeks. I think it's around six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. six to eight weeks. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, the domain three is about the pros grad qualifications, which uh, uh, you know, yeah. if you haven't done so far, then you don't need to worry about it because if you have done it, then you will got these marks. Um, people have done um, like things, things like um, uh, obviously some people do MSCs um, and PhDs and all that, but they are very few. So don't worry about that. If you haven't got it, don't think that this is something all the core trainees are doing in, in UK. They are not actually that clever. <laughs> but I was going to ask you, this is an important part because they, hey, can you claim marks for your MD in India or an FCPS? No, no, no. That's what I was about to clarify. We yeah. cannot claim for the post the MD degrees or diplomas from India. So this is specifically they are saying said for you know kind of quality improvement and leadership kind of. So I don't. So many people have had you know submitted evidence for this as in like MD from India, but they were scored uh, zero. I, now I will like to differ on that. I think you can claim. And I don't remember whether I claimed and got or not, but I think people have definitely claimed and got the match. So there are two things. One yeah. is domain three. The other will be the domain about research. So when you have done MD, and obviously you have done a thesis. So if you claim your MD and five marks here, or you end at this end also later on, if you claim for in the research, if you claim for a thesis, there are people who have got the mark. There are people who have got it after appeal and there are people who have not got it. So I will definitely advise you to take a chance. I would say the same. So I uh, did my FCPS uh, training in psychiatry from Pakistan at the end. We get a diploma as well. And I uploaded it in this domain and they accepted it. So I think you can use your, your MD and your FCPS or whatever qualification you have in your own country um, as evidence here as well. So I got the four marks for it. I would just like to add one thing. Compared to UK graduates who only have MRC psych, when we apply FST4, we have something like MD and MRC psych. So we definitely have two degrees. So I think we should yeah. take recognition for that. Yeah. Vineet, what, you, what, was, what, what, uh, what did you do in this, uh, this area? Oh, I, I, I didn't claim this. I gave myself zero and I didn't claim this at all. Um, all right. Yeah. As for the next one, uh, next domain is the post-graduate post-graduate training awards and prizes. I think this is Vanit what you were talking about. That if you got a prize as part of your yeah. MRC psych or not MRC psych, sorry, yeah, uh, as your MD or something like that, you know, then you can uh, claim that. Is that right? Uh, if I remember, I had claimed in the other one because this says from national body. What I got was not a national body. Hmm. Uh, it was just a certificate which I got from my own college. Uh, so I, if I remember right, I had claimed this in the other section, hmm. uh, but I got two marks. I don't know if it's this or in the other section uh, that I had scored. Uh, but other was undergraduate, so I think you probably got it here. Uh, maybe we are confusing it now. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> confusing it now. Yeah. Amit, did you? Amit, and thinking in undergraduate, so it's only postgraduate. Thing, so. so so yeah. yeah. Can I add? So basically, this uh, it doesn't require it to be a, from a national body. So I, I had kind of a gold medal from during my MD. So it, it was just a, at, at a college level, not even university level. So you can add at if, if you have a prize at, at, at you know the college level, you will get the marks. And above, did you get anything on, on this one? I think you're mute. No, no, nothing. All right. I can go up the next one. Um, that was, um, this is an important, uh, there's another, I think a lot of people were ask, asking about that, that if you have worked in other specialties other than psychiatry, 
so some people have like sort of done jobs prior to the to choosing psychiatry so they were working in medicine or gp or other things so i don't know if you know anybody i think you guys were all pure psychiatrists am i <laughs> am i yeah. right about it usually outside uk we don't have that culture of changing specialties very rarely people do it very rarely because but he uk it is quite common lot of people change from gp and i i don't know people from medicine surgery coming to psychiatry so they will get to marks here but if you have worked like anywhere other than psychiatry let's say some people work in neurology for 6 months so you can try to claim but yeah it is difficult to get the evidence and everything one of the trainees tell me she, she i think she worked in surgery before sir choosing the psychiatry and then she has to get a certificate from a supervisor surgical supervisor to say that she has done that many years in surgery and then uh, claim these marks um yeah yeah uh, i think i would like to add that i did claim because as part of the md training i had uh, three months in neurology and three months in general medicine so i had six months of uh, training as part of md psychiatry itself so i got from my uh, head of department of psychiatry saying that he has done from the state to the state training in this place and then that was accepted i got one mark here oh wow <laughs> so that's why this is and this is new <laughs> that's that like really a, good that's, that's actually really clever i could have used yeah. that as well <laughs> i feel bad now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this uh, clinical governance and audit you know that part portion obviously this is uh, again you know the problem here is that this they, we uh, in our home countries uh, in like india and pakistan we may not have the culture of doing audits and call it improvement projects uh, but if you are working in uk you you probably have been involved in these um, did you guys experience sakib did you get anything in in this one so i uh, worked for two years in ireland and every year um, as part of our um, medical council registration we we had to we um, as part of registration with the with the royal college there we had to do a, uh, an audit every year so i had two audits uh, with me so i think i scored myself three here uh, so that is about it uh, resulting in a local change so i shared the evidence i shared the powerpoint presentations for the audits uh, which i did um, so i had a workplace based assessment done on one of the one of the audits as well so i shared that um, and i had presented it at a at a local teaching as well so i shared that as well and i got the three marks anubha when we need to you have any experience of this um... Uh, yeah i think i'll go first so uh, i i also got three marks over here because uh, i had done an audit when i was in india and it was uh, we presented it locally and i got my head of department to uh, he uh, i literally told him to write that his had this thing changed and he did write it for me so i got the three marks for this based on that uh, letter i got from the head of the department uh, anubhav did you have any anything from india or from uk so so uh, one of the hospitals i worked in was an nabh accredited hospital we are supposed to do audits as a part of nabh accredited so, so i was part of quite a few audits and one thing that's really important if you read here is that audit as we sometimes we just take a cross sectional view and consider it an audit but they don't consider that an audit so they want a complete audit cycle okay so we for example we did an audit about valproet and whether follow, we are following the lft and other monitoring that so we did the audit we found out we are just doing that monitoring 50% so then we changed our protocol policy and other things how we can make sure it's done more frequently then we did, did the audit again and it was around 80% so that was a complete audit cycle we did something found some deficiency applied some changes then did the audit again that is needed rather than just one cross sectional audit So okay. I could claim three miles, and someone was asked how they can show the evidence. So they need to show the audit, as in about shortly a PowerPoint or a Word document and a certificate, both. Okay, Amit, did you have uh, any yeah. experience of this? Yeah, sorry, just my battery was running, so I just changed my position. Just a sec. Mm. Yeah, so basically, I had a very bad experience because Raja, you remember we did an audit. yeah just for this quickly but they didn't accept that because it has to be the whole audit cycle not just one part of it so you have to do a audit you have to suggest changes and then you have to do another audit and complete the audit cycle so then only you will get marks i thought at least i will get two marks but no i didn't get any marks 
So okay. if you are, yeah, somewhere you can start the process right now to get some three to three marks at least if you complete the whole cycle. Uh, and this is the research part which we were talking about yeah, earlier. Just... So as a, I know, as part of your MD, you are you are doing research, and also as a as a as a part of FCPS, you must have done research as well in Pakistan. Um, I should me you go to Sakib first. Sakib, did you get any marks on this, and uh, how did you claim them? So, although it mentions that uh, whatever you did as part of your MD or other training, it won't count. But I submitted the same research project I did as part of my FCPS training, and they accepted it. So, I think you can use it uh, because um, I got four marks for it. That I had a personal direct direct involvement of uh, leading a postgraduate research project. And uh, even the evidence which I shared mentioned that it was all done as part of the of the training, uh, but they accepted it. So I got I I got marks for it. Um, so sorry, yes. So there is some confusion about this. Some people do MD in research, so they get a degree of MD, and that MD is rather than MD psychiatrist, MD in research. So I think that what here is if MD is this got obtained as a part of that research training uh, just because so for example if someone does uh, gets an md in psychiatry but they have not done thesis right as a part of that md so then they say i have the md i should get marks they would not get marks but if you have done md psychiatry and then you have done a thesis at all as a part of this you would get marks so what i feel is i definitely got marks in this when i submitted that i had done a thesis as a part of my md but it is a bit of luck because the person who assesses your scoring will not be really able to exactly understand what is meant here. The way I understand is it's quite clear that if you have done a thesis as a part of your MD training, you should get marks. And some people have got it again, some people have got it on appeal and some people have not got it. So definitely claim it. And the way I understand it, actually you should get it. Hmm. Amit, your experience on this? Yeah, basically so what I will advise people is if you want to avoid the confusion, mark yourself as four, because when you mark yourself four, you know, you're not claiming anything about the MD or anything. You're just claiming that you are the lead author and you are the lead author of the dissertation you do for the MD. So you will get, so I got four marks for that. I think that's a very good point because I also got four marks and I can understand why that's important because five marks can be more confusing because MD and everything is coming in five marks. Four marks is just showing the evidence of your thesis, which I did and probably I did and it doesn't. And then they won't worry about where it was done, whether it was part of MD or somewhere else. And Vanit, did you any experience of this particular portion? Yeah, so uh, like Sakib said, even here I had claimed my thesis as, uh, and I think I got five over here because I had uh, put myself as the chief investigator. So I had got um, received five itself. I think... <laughs> We need got um, a very good assessor, I think. <laughs> yeah. so my my <laughs> suggestion would be definitely what Amit yeah. said. If yeah, you have I mean, priority claim for five, then you are maybe. Uh, you yeah. have to be like Many people it. didn't get it even after claim, so don't don't yeah. go for it. Yeah, yeah. Go for four. yeah, that's right. I, I also would agree with Anubhav and Amit that it's better to go for four because uh, I personally know doctors who didn't who got zero in spite of claiming they got zero, and they provided the same evidence that I did. Uh, so. What um, sort of evidence are you looking for? What kind of evidence are you looking for? You said you had a paper research uh, supervisor from India has written a letter for yeah, you. That you... Uh, so in, in India, uh, probably in Pakistan also, when you do a thesis, you make a book out of it. And the front page of the book yeah. has that <laughs> this was done as part of the this thing and it's signed by the uh, head of the department. So I had that as one. And then my head of the department had a letter as well saying that he, has, he was chief investigator of this uh, review. And... Um, uh, then I had the uh, slides from it. So that, that, that's all I had provided, but they gave me five marks. Uh, I and didn't you... attach my MD degree with this. Uh, I know the other doctors who didn't get any mark attached their MD degree over here. And yeah. uh, I don't know whether <laughs> that true. has caused them to lose the mark. I'm not sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about the uh, research? If this was research was not published in a peer review journal, do you still get the marks here? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, my, yeah. my dissertation was not, I didn't not get my, published. Yeah, same here. So my dissertation, I didn't uh, send it for publication and it was still accepted and I got four marks here. 
Now, yeah. this, this, good, this is good to know, I think, for IMG psychiatrists. Now, this teaching domain is, a, again, I, I think this is an important one because you, here they're asking for a lot of evidence around the feedback and all of that. So I'll ask you one by one about what was your experience and, is, and if you have any advice for people who are teaching or, because this is something they can probably do now as well, because, you know, we've still got a few, few months before they will uh, ask for evidence. Raja, sorry, uh, can we go back to the previous one? Just, I will just yeah. tell them what to do. So basically, for the evidence for research, get a letter from your clinical supervisor and you write to them saying that, do, I mean, if possible, do not mention that it was a part of MD dissertation. All you need to write in the signed letterhead is, this person was the lead uh, investigator of the project titled, by the title of the project, and you have to provide a summary of the project. Obviously, if you have done dissertation on a big project, you will have a summary or the abstract. So you have to submit an abstract and a letter from the from your clinical supervisor on a letterhead. It doesn't have, you, you don't need to mention MD or it was a part of a dissertation. So that's what I did. And so I got four. Okay. So in Pakistan, when you've completed your dissertation and it's approved uh, by the CPSP, so uh, you get a letter in email from the research evaluation unit that your dissertation is accepted. So I used the same letter uh, as evidence and, it, and I got the marks. So you can use that. Okay, I think it's um, variable then. What about this domain? Uh, um, let me speak with Vinit. Vinit, did, did you get anything from this or any advice of people? How can they score on this uh, teaching domain? Because uh, yeah, for this, uh, I, I had uh, I had taken part in the local teaching in our trust as well. And so I had the feedback from uh, one of the programs that has done uh, which I had done a teaching after this and I uh, requested everyone to give a feedback so I could upload into this. But I also got the, because I had done teaching when I was in India as well. Uh, uh, so I had uh, taken that as well uh, and I uploaded uh, both. And I think I scored um, three or two. I think there's two that I had scored in, uh, for this. I have some experience in teaching. Yeah, that's what I had scored myself and that's the mark I had got. Uh, but I had the evidence from the trust over here, and I had evidence from India as well. Rubav, any 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 advice on this one? Just that I was trying to claim three, but I was not able to gather evidence. So what I did was immediately asked my tutor, the tutor at the place I was working at. I immediately took a lecture to the people there, asked them for feedback and got the certificate from the tutor that I have taken the lecture. So I think getting two marks here is very easy. It can be done within days. If you want to get three and four, it is, I think, something that is... So I think getting two is easy, and you can still do it, because I think most of the people have still enough time. Okay. What about Amit? What did your experience with this? Yeah, it, it was quite easy for me because I was working as assistant professor for six months before coming. So I just got a letter saying that uh, I was working as assistant professor and yeah, like he, has, he was involved in teaching of. So basically the letter has to be very important. So, so what you mentioned in the letter, it has to, it, it has to mention that uh, who was, who are the audience of, it, of the teaching and what was your position. And you can also mention the topics you covered in the teaching just to make it as, you know, the, the, as genuine as possible. So, yeah, so it can be any teaching. It can be UG, teaching through UGs, PGs, and colleagues, or nursing staff also. Like, So I, I got a letter saying all that things. Sakib, did you claim anything on this one? So I was working uh, for almost a year as an assistant professor um, at, a, at a local medical college in Peshawar at the time. Uh, the only thing is that I scoped myself too, uh, which is I have some experience in formal teaching. And I, by that time, I had uh, taught over 30 lectures. I think I could have scored myself three. Uh, I only realized it later on that I could have scored myself a bit more uh, because I did organize um, lectures for them and made some some changes to the, to the curriculum as well. Um, so as evidence, what I did was I got a letter uh, from the medical college and it was about my teaching experience and how it included feedback uh, from the students as well. And then I requested, uh, so we had a medical education department in our medical college as well. So I asked them to send me a list of, uh, uh, list of all the lectures that I, I had delivered so far. So I submitted these two as evidence and I got the two marks, but I think I could have gotten even three marks here. 
So if you uh, that I was going to ask you this, guys, uh, that if you are scoring yourself low, is there is there a case you've seen when they will actually increase your score to say, well, this this evidence you submitted is actually you should be getting more marks, or if you have scored low, they'll just keep you low. <laughs> no, they, they will they so, will increase the increase or so what they've written in the guidance is they will increase or decrease the score depending on the evidence. So they can increase the score. So yeah. Uh, but I would like to add that I scored myself two, and I know uh, doctors have scored themselves three, and they give the same evidence that I gave, and they got three, and I got two. So probably they would increase in exceptional cases. Uh, but if you score yourself three and you sort of give the evidence, probably they would give you the marks. I think it depends on the scoring um, uh, yeah. people as well. How 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 closely they're looking looking at the evidence. Uh, now this is another one, uh, the academic publication, undergraduate, or postgraduate publication. This is this is especially specifically for um, the research that you have published in the peer review journals. Uh, so I'm sure you guys have, uh, you know, you can't you can't score yourself twice. So if you have claimed these marks already with your um, the, the the domain you just explaining with your MDD MD or your FCPS, so this is separate from this, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So it's separate. So you you can't use the same uh, research project which uh, you submitted in the research area, and then you know you can't use the same public uh, evidence as publication here. Uh, if I'm if I'm right, uh, because I use different evidence uh, as publications for this domain. Um, yeah. So Amit, you want to add something there? You yeah. must have yeah. you are, you're going keen on research. You must have got scores there as well. Yeah, yeah, I had a few publications, so that was not an issue. So yeah, I think we cannot claim it twice, once in the research domain and one in this domain, but we can claim it twice in the domain nine and ten. So if so basically I had published a paper, a few papers. So one of them I presented in the national conference. So that's fine. So you can claim in nine and ten the same paper, but you cannot claim the same in Domain seven, which is a research, and then domain yeah. nine again. Okay. Uh, Anubhav, you have any, uh, what about it here? Did you score anything here? I think you're mute. So I scored one only because I have no, I have been lacking in research and publishing. Okay. Should have been actually, but I was getting one. But from what I remember, there was something like whatever you have claimed in domain six can be claimed in domain nine, and what you have claimed in domain seven can be claimed in domain 10, 10, something like that. Okay. So I will go to 10 and 10 is quite uh, quite simple. I think 10 is something people can do now as well. Uh, what about Vineet? Vineet, did you get any publication? Did you have any publications to claim here? Yeah, I had a case, but I scored myself one. So I think that was what it was. Uh, uh, it, I think it would have gotten only one. So I had a case that was published in uh, Indian Journal and that was accepted as, I think that was, uh, I scored one mark for that. Okay. And uh, this is the domain 10 that people are mentioning quite commonly because domain 10 is about a poster presentation um, and the last six years, which is quite a long time, actually. You know, the poster presentation in different sort of, they have given different level of conferences, locally, local departmental presentation or uh, meetings or in international meetings, national meeting. So if you have done in a, one of the Royal College conferences, a poster presentation, I think this will uh, score well. So I'll start with Vineet from the top. Vineet, uh, uh, in, in this particular one, you have any advice or and you from your yeah, well, I had I had presented my thesis at a South Indian uh, conference and I used that and uh, I had a certificate saying he had uh, presented uh, this at this conference and the uh, I had the um, sort of presentation I had made to, as well so I uploaded those slides as well hmm. uh, and I think I scored five in that uh, when I, because it was like a regional meeting so then they had accepted that and I had scored five. So this is a double scoring we're talking about. So if somebody has done an audit, they can uh, they can claim it in the quality improvement project, and then if they develop a poster of that audit, then they can again claim marks here. So yeah. you don't have, in that you can yes. double score because you were kind of uh, this is sort of a separate issue. So again, if you've done a present a research and then you have made a poster of that research, then you can again double mm -hmm. mark yourself and claim here. This is what the, yeah. you guys were uh, mentioning earlier. Anubhav, anything you want to add here? So that's the same thing. The research you can claim here again. I personally had zero because for five years at least I was in private practice and I had actually presented someone something in the national conference, but it was seven years ago. So I was unlucky in that regards. But any present and case present can be claimed and the research, even if the thesis can be claimed here as well. Okay. Um do you uh, Sakib, do you want to say anything about this one? 
So I scored myself one here. So I had, uh, so there was a poster comp- uh, competition, um, sort of a local meeting uh, at, uh, at a hospital in Ireland where I was working. So, so I, I had made a poster and I presented it. So I got one marks here. But uh, I would say that if you if you know in time that you can you can you can you know present it at a national international meeting, uh, so you can even score yourself five here uh, because uh, so I was in Pakistan for at least eighteen months uh, when I returned back from Ireland and many regional uh, conferences um, organized by Pakistan Psychiatry, Pakistan Psychiatric Society uh, has gone and I could have easily you know presented it there because they they. They ask you about, you know, poster poster presentations. So you can score yourself uh, even five here if you have presented it at a, um, at a conference organized by Pakistan Psychiatric Society in Pakistan. So you can easily get five marks here. Amit, uh, what was your experience? Yeah. yeah, so I had presented in the national conference, so I got five. But my issue was that I couldn't find the, the copy of presentation. So I actually, for, thankfully, I had uploaded my pick on the Facebook uh, with the poster because that time we didn't have electronic posters. We had posters where we stick on the wall. Yeah. So, so I uploaded that pick as the, you know, like evidence. <laughs> and, and there was no other way because, because that was a printed poster. So I, and I had lost the PowerPoint presentation. So yeah, thankfully FB yeah. helped me here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is, this is one of the easier domain, I think, because the uh, presenting in a Royal College conference is actually not that difficult. I'm just uh, speaking to the uh, participants. If you, you know, Royal College is doing conferences and events like every month, there are two, three events in the Royal College yeah. and uh, well, a lot of them are happening online. The poster presentations are happening online as well. Um, and you can, uh, you know, you, a lot of people think I've done a little project, you know, they might not accept it. I would say, you know, they accept kind of everything as long as you are writing it a little bit uh, in a professional way. So this, this is something that uh, I think our core trainees also get uh, to get a chance to do. And I think uh, the international doctors should be have more confidence in doing that, um, doing their poster presentations. Um, so next me just go to the next one. I, this is the last one, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So after you have submitted this, uh, I was going to ask you, so you said you, you score yourself with the application, you put, you, you score yourself and you submit the scores with the application. They give you six weeks to submit the evidence, you submit the evidence. And then when did you hear about that? What have they scored you on? What, when did you hear that what, they accepted your scores or not? Um, so basically after six weeks, you get a link to upload the, uh, upload the evidence. Yeah. And then you have another say two weeks to upload the evidence. After uploading the evidence again, I think it's just two to three weeks, two weeks after that. It's yeah, it's, I think it, so yeah, I think it's two weeks time we got yeah. the results of the score. Yeah, I would say the same. I think it was yeah. only two to three weeks. Uh, within that, we got the score. Uh, yeah. So, so Raja, when you go to ST for psychiatry website, they will always have the timetable available, which will give a yeah. provisional dates about when the things will be like for example ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it says self assessment verification for the August people like is uh, 21st February to 4th March 2022 and then the assessment verification is 7th March so around 2-3 weeks so it, that is always one, a tentative date and then the confirmed date so it's right and then in online interviews, they are starting in the February part, part. so um, I will just uh, la- touch on the online interviews and then think we can um, what was your experience of the online interview? Because I, um, they haven't published the questions yet, but they say that just 10 days a, a, a week ahead of the um, a, a ahead of the interview, they will give you the questions. And there were two questions uh, in the last two, the same two questions they were asked in the last two rounds at least. Um, I just wanted to ask you, what was your experience of those? I think it was, uh, it was, it was quite easy uh, because only a while ago we were we were practicing for CASC. Uh, um, so for me, I already had a lot of practice on on these uh, on, on a lot of stations. And the good thing uh, about this area is that you know in advance on uh, the stations as well. You have an opportunity uh, to prepare for them. So um, I think it was it was. Uh, it was as easy as it uh, as it gets. I think uh, most people will not have any problem in this area. 
um, at the same time, it's important to make sure uh, to to practice as much as possible. I think it it will be a it will be a very good idea to 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 practice with some of the consultants who are working in UK uh, just to just to get some feedback on 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 how you are answering questions. So I and Anubhav here we 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 practiced uh, the same stations under under some consultants working in UK. So I think it's important. Okay. Uh, but as compared to CAS, it will be very easy. So these are, I just want to explain that you mentioned CAS, but there won't be any patients there. There will just be two interviewers uh, in sitting in front of you. And these questions are, um, rather than checking your clinical knowledge, they are checking your understanding communication of skills, yeah. uh, communication skills and you, how do you sort of leadership skills, your uh, problem solving skills, uh, team working skills, all of those things. So these, the, 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 the themes are quite uh, different. And they'll ask you a question, one of the questions, and then around two minutes, three minutes or one minute, they can stop you and then ask you some supplementary questions about, which will be again on based on the same themes. So you must practice these. I'm not saying that this these questions will come again exactly the same. They might change the question. We just have to wait and see. But this has been coming in the last two two rounds. I'll ask Amit about this. Amit, what was your experience with, where, with this one? I feel that once they, I mean, declare the questions, you need to prepare properly. Like it's not something which you can take lightly. So I think we we should have another session, Raja. I think if for people because this is quite tough. I mean, if you're not worked in the UK system to answer those questions, it's a it's a tough issue. You need to know what happens in the UK because if you answer the way you we do back home, you you will kind of you'll get very less marks. So I think once the questions are declared, we can have another session, but you need to prepare properly. One most important thing is uh, you shouldn't get anything from the internet because if they fi find that the answer you're telling is, you know, which is uh, made from the internet, you actually get very less marks and this has happened with people. So yeah, you, you need to prepare it properly. It should be original, genuine, which is from your, like made by you basically and not copied from any, anywhere. So yeah, we, we can arrange something for that, Raja. Yeah. Anubha, was your, what was your advice would be when this stage will come? So I would just training is the Pakistan, the MD, the clinical training. But higher training is not all clinical knowledge. They don't they now know that you have clinical knowledge. It's all about being a leader, taking being a teacher, being a manager, being a, someone with good clinical governments who can improve things. So these questions are supposed to make you aware of those things that you are supposed to. So simply speaking, these questions, in you, you are supposed to talk more about approach these questions as a leader. How you will approach this question as challenge? How will you manage people around you? How will you know your limitations? So it's not about mainly clinical knowledge. So that's why if you have worked in UK, I think that's a very big advantage. And if you have not worked in UK, you should prepare at least double than what a UK graduate would want to prepare. So again, as Samit said, we can discuss this. Uh, Anubha, what was your, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Vinit, what would be your uh, advice on this? Yeah, I think uh, 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 I agree with what was said that you have to prepare. You cannot take it casually and you have to practice as well because only when you practice, uh, because I, when I did the interview recently, I was within 30 seconds, I was interrupted yeah. and they take it in a particular way. So, you know, you cannot have like, uh, you should not be sort of giving a tick box sort of uh, answers. You should like sort of reply to what they want you to reply to. And when you practice with different consultants, you sort of uh, understand uh, and you yourself get those sort of triggers in your uh, brain and what you're saying and what can be said next because quite often you do make a huge answer and you know what to say but you don't remember to say it at that point of time but when you practice obviously you'll be able to um, uh, recollect it better and uh, although I was interrupted I know another doctor who was not interrupted at all and he was allowed to speak the full six minutes uh, completely uh, so yeah I think uh, you have to take it seriously and uh, practice it a lot uh, again, uh, like I said, I know a doctor who is from Kuwait and he, but this was before it was online uh, and he came here for the interview and he just said that I've not had any experience in the NHS, so I don't know what to say for the system in the, in the UK and they were accepting of it is what he told and he, uh, he did obviously get the ST4 job. So probably if you're 
not worked in the UK, don't be discouraged. Uh, you know, you can uh, easily, uh, you know, pick up things and uh, uh, you'll definitely have to work harder just to be aware of the system. Uh, I wouldn't recommend saying that I don't know anything about it, but at least you be a bit aware and then uh, put forward. I think they would also appreciate that, you know, you're not working and yet you're aware of these things. So that should be a good way to go forward. I think that it's the reason the interview questions are very important because, you know, we people worry a lot about um, the the self verified self score assessment that's only 70 17% i think these two questions each one of them um, i mean is i think it's coming to about 30 33% of the whole score and there is a minimum requirement as well that you need to score 50% at least um, i have known one doctor i've known i mean not many people failed that but i have known one doctor who actually couldn't pass this stage so despite regardless of what scores he had in other places they said you were not appointable uh, so that's why these questions are very important, you know, that how do you uh, un answer them? And if we're, we're assuming that they're going to follow the same um, interview pattern and same um, same percentage for this year as well, which they have said in the in, in the guide, but they haven't released the, the questions yet. Uh, so I think that is what I, most of what we were going to talk about has been covered, but I just want to ask you, is there any questions in the chat which you have? Uh, I think Anubha were already replying to chat messages. Um, and anything that you have have picked up there, which you think is useful or to be shared? I think a lot of people have uh, queries regarding some speciality experience. So obviously UK people know that uh, all over outside UK, you don't get some specialty experience in camps, LD, but you need to definitely get some evidence of camps. Uh, it can be from the letter from the HOD saying that there your college had some experience in camps you, you just cannot ignore that no we didn't had camps so so yeah you need to get at least six months experience in camps that is a requirement for st4 training i mean that is the question that has come so regarding six months experience do they need to just say they had experience or they need to show a certificate because my understanding is that when i where i work we used to see camps based on almost all through my training but i didn't have a specific camps posting so do we need to show a six month posting certificate? Because I don't so, think it's being asked. What is it? No, that, no. Uh, when you fill the Oriel form, you will show all your posts, right? In that post, you need, you just mentioned somewhere that, you know, there's, there was a camps experience basically. Because, so, sorry to interrupt. In my, uh, as far as I remember, in my Oriel, I did not write specific posts. Yeah. I just wrote as three years of MD. Okay. What did Vinit I mean, and Sakib do? Yeah, because I, I think I also did what yeah, I don't, did. I didn't. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, sorry. sorry please. Uh, you know, I was just saying that I did what Anubhav did, that I didn't uh, specify the post. I just said three years <coughs> psychiatry and that was uh, accepted. So, uh, in the Oriel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the Oriel, yeah. Yes. I think because that is that is a difficulty because in in outside the UK camps with child psychiatry, as you said, you know, psychiatry may be just one thing, and people may seeing all kind of patients, but they're not specifically uh, working in one specific psychiatry, child psychiatry yeah. place. So, Sagar, what did you do? What was your uh, answer to this? So, uh, I would say the same that although I mentioned uh, uh, three years of psychiatry training, but I didn't submit anything specific in terms of camp. So, I had done a one year in camps before I applied for uh, for the post, uh, but I didn't submit anything, and they still accepted it. So I think there there poss possibly there is a way around it as well. I mean, I don't remember but, submitting something specific uh, uh, in relation to camps posting. So I think um, it will still work if uh, somebody hasn't worked specifically in a camps post. Because if I am not wrong, certificate C is the only thing that you signed, right? And in certificate C, it doesn't ask for six months camps posting, anything no. typical like that. But they ask that was required. Yeah, but, but it's a requirement. Stage. That's so. If you go through yeah. the core psychiatric curriculum, that's a requirement. I think yeah. at the stage of CASC, they they do ask you. Uh, so before you sit CASC, I remember they they ask whether whether you you've had cams experience or not yeah but they don't um, specifically ask for any evidence of cams yeah so yeah my, my suggestion will be just keep you know any evidence ready just in case according to me you know it, it all it all depends on supply and demand if the supply is high then they will they will become strict about the criteria so just to make be sure 
always is better to get the keep the evidence ready in case they need it so yeah um i think the was, good the good part is that at the moment there are more posts and less applicants so probably yeah. everyone applying to these posts they will get a post somewhere in uk yeah, yeah. The, but but last year it was quite competitive i mean there was 90% filled rate which is <laughs> which is crazy i mean so this year i am expecting lot more than that so you need to be yeah. careful i think the number of people so core psychiatry seats if they are filled more obviously st training will have more applicants so core psychiatry seats in past were on getting filled now they are getting filled more and more so obviously those people when they finish core training they will apply for higher training and the competition will increase so my suggestion is if you are taking a st training do it take it as soon as possible yeah, yeah i think that again is a good yeah. advice and more people are actually passing cash as well because you know since the mrc psych has gone online people used to spend a lot of money they couldn't afford it now they can do it from their bedroom so they yeah. are actually taking taking it more often uh, sorry yeah. somebody was saying um, i think amit was saying something yeah that's what it's not just core trainees people are directly you know coming to st4 from outside with the, like from international students so so i mean it's very competitive so i will say just be ready with all the evidence don't uh, so yeah you never know you know at what point they will you know they will say that no oh, it's not okay. acceptable yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Ha- having said that, so i haven't heard of anyone who wasn't offered a post again if you don't find the post at the location you want you might not take the post but most people at least get the post and hopefully it make it continues but there is no guarantee is it I was going to say the same as so far now I don't know any MRC psych who wanted to do ST training and they haven't got post but obviously it's about the location especially they like to do they might not get that same with if you get a CCT and psychiatry you you are kind of almost guaranteed to have a consultant post you might not the post you want you might not get the specific hospital you want but you know there are so much shortage around that uh, becoming a consultant after getting CCT is not um, not that difficult then then this is another question people ask that what if you are joining as an st trainee would you get a caesar cp or a cct now the rules have changed now you will uh, you will be getting the cct is that right uh, amit you were doing research on that for part yeah yeah so now irrespective of specialty you choose even if it is 3 years specialty this this started this january basically so even if you do single general adult only old age you will get a cct so don't worry about that okay so, there's a question about old age that did you actually show any evidence of old age anywhere because old age psychiatry is very specifically not very common in uk and our core trainees do 6 months of ad but in outside uk people are not getting experience of that have you have you have you done um, any shown any experience of old age when you tell ask you if there was you were a specifically old age trainee <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but i didn't show any evidence of old age uh, i i do remember that when you we put up this 3 years they ask what it is about and i said it involves child uh, general adult old age uh, and even um, de addiction i had mentioned in the oral at that time but i didn't put any specific evidence with regards to old age yeah and about the uh, the c certificate if in the c certificate if you have gained the competency for old age that's it i think they don't need anything more yeah, i think that was my understanding the c certificate and your mrc psych is already checking your uh, your uh, ability yeah. to actually take up the post as as an st trainee and with with, comp- with c certificate is equal to your core competencies uh, so that if you have got the sign that you are saying that you you are at the level to uh, take up the post as in the as an st4 level um is there anything else you want to add i'm just trying to look for the messages see if there's any question we have missed but i i realize anubhav has been very anubhav thank you for actually being so active and answering all the questions and you've been doing that uh, i'll just uh, ask the question i um, i posted in the chat uh, i don't think anyone answered it was i think about uh, you know I, i'm i was retained in pakistan and we do rotations in neurology medicine and uh, one other psychology whatever so there are three month rotations so will two of them count uh, together they'll come to six months will that count for you know getting one or two points whatever we fall on the on the form self scoring yeah hi hi medhi yeah that's exactly what i did because i had three months in medicine and three months in neurology and i got six months and that counts as one point i think the 5 to 12 months a part of the thing so that's exactly what i did and i i got a point for that so it's definitely worth a try all right and the other question uh, was for dr sake because he's also from pakistan and 
my question was about the dissertation does it need to be accepted by cpsp or only uh, you know we've written the dissertation we have submitted it it's been signed by our supervisor is that the front page enough to claim points for it i think as long as you have some form of evidence um, to support that you actually have done a research project and uh, your your dissertation it was uh, supervised by by a supervisor and if you can provide the evidence for instance maybe a letter from from your supervisor and uh, maybe a copy a pdf copy of the dissertation which you did i think you will still get the points um, i don't think so that you need a, a let um, uh, it was actually accepted perfect thanks yeah anyone else wants to say anything or add anything or should we end the meeting i will uh, i've recorded this so i will post it somewhere i think maybe it's such a big file i we'll have to post it on youtube maybe i have to make uh, portions of that uh, but uh, i like to thank all of you especially as i said i knew i, I didn't realize when we were arranging the date that it will clash with diwali you know you should be spending time with your family but you have given us time to uh, come and on this forum and uh, discussing um, uh, your experience i think it's always important for people like you to actually come forward and tell people that what you did because people can then relate to to that more and then relate and then they have the confidence to apply for it you know because on paper every information is available everywhere but it doesn't make sense when, especially when you're an IMG you, it, it doesn't make sense and i've been through all of this uh, when i came to uk as an IMG so i like to thank all of you very much you know for uh, giving us the time Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Ahmed. It's, it's, it's like you said, it's really helpful. I'm sure it's really helpful for all the doctors as well. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to add that I had read Amit's uh, blog as well before I came here, and I, it actually scared me because yeah. he, he took a lot of time to get his visa, and uh, I didn't take that long. But Amit is yeah. scary. Amit is very scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Good you now. Okay. Um, and from my side, if anyone wants to contact me or anyone else, I know everyone will be happy to do that. We can be easily found anywhere, I'm sure. And you can yeah. contact Raja. He can definitely be found. Yeah. <laughs> Very well known personality. And Raja, I really thank you. You have always. Yeah, we all are here because of Raja. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raja has forty-eight hours a day. I yeah. <laughs> 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 my wife is not happy with me for doing all of this so <laughs> but uh, no thank you very much for guys thank for your time most welcome thank you thank you take care bye bye, bye. 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 bye.